I want us to turn to the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> and I will read from the Amplified Version. In Isaiah chapter 61, 11 verses. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed, qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, to the poor, and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, the opening of the prison and of the eyes to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland, beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a heavy burden and failing spirit, that they may be called oaths of righteousness, magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall rebuild the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and renew the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. <clears throat> Aliens shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and wine dressers. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. People will speak of you as ministers of our God. You shall eat the well of the nation and the glory shall be yours. Instead of your former shame, you shall have twofold recompense. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess double what they have forfeited. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong with violence or a burnt offering. And I will faithfully give them their recompense in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant of league with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, their descendants among the people. All who see them in their prosperity will recognize, acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exalt in my God. For he had clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decked himself with a garland, as a bride adorned herself with her jewels. For as surely as the earth brings forth its shoots, as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring forth, so surely the Lord will cause rightness, justice, praise to spring forth before all the nations. Amen. I want to speak to you, precious people of God. And I pray God will open your mind. Many of us, God had already done that, but there are also those of us online, everywhere. And that is in verse 7, the key verse, God wants to double portion to you. God wants to give you a double portion. Amen. In Jesus' name. Lord bless you. You may be seated. 
God have never created you to lose out on his righteousness. Every time the Bible mentions from Old Testament to the New Testament about God's righteousness. In fact, Romans say, is there anyone right, righteous before God? None. And we know we all have been, have been in a fallen world. We ourselves are fallen. But when God created the first man, Adam, God's righteousness was in his life and even Eve. The enemy come to steal, to destroy, to steal. So the enemy do not want you to realize that God wants to give you back the righteousness. His righteousness. And if you have God's righteousness in your life, you are new in Christ Jesus. You have been created new again. That means what we have read in Isaiah 61, all of God's blessing, all of God's goodness is going to come to you. Because God, when he look at you, he look at you as you are like me. You have my righteousness. God do not see you fallen. God do not see you uh, in any way blemished. And it all comes through your faith in believing. Don't underestimate your faith when you believe on Jesus Christ. Even Jesus himself said, to this man will I look to someone who believes in me. And so Isaiah mentioned a very powerful thing that you and I, we should not miss out when we believe in Jesus Christ. That is in your life, you can have a double portion. When I was a child, my brother who's two years older than me, he always get double portion. In the morning when mommy makes the half boiled egg, he get double portion. I only get one portion, two eggs, one egg. The result is I was, I was a very scrawny, skinny, tiny little boy. Whereas my brother, he's a chubby, big, strong guy. Because of the double portion. Even the chicken rice, he get double portion. I only get one portion. And on and on with everything. Obviously, he get double. I only get one portion. Of course, common sense will tell you. If he got double, he's blessed. Everything is double. His body is double. His life is double. And so he don't mind it. He enjoy it. I got a grandson here, Sheldon. He loves to drink. You give him anything, juice or water, he'll drink. He'll drink. And he will demand more. You give him fruits, same thing. But not so with Sidri. He's a picky guy. He said, I don't like this. I will take only one bite. That's it. And so look at him. He's a skinny, scrawny little fella. Because he does not take in much. But I want you to know, the Bible says, whether physical or spiritual, if you understand you are in Christ Jesus, he wants to give you double portion. He wants to give you double portion in your finances. He wants to give you double portion in your health. He wants to give you double portion in your children. Amen. Yeah. Everything is double. Don't you like it? You go buy something, they say, oh, take another portion. Why? It's free, double portion. You go, yes, you buy donut, you buy six, they give you another six more. Double portion, right? McDonald, you buy one set, they give you two set. Double portion, everything is double. Everybody likes double. And so in the Bible, God said, instead of the shame that you receive, God 
wants to give you your inheritance and double it. So that you rejoice. You will inherit a double portion in your land, in your everlasting joy, in your health. And that's what Isaiah 61 say, God knows. When you in your faith in believing in him, everything he wants to do for you is double. And so, it is so exciting to know because the just shall live by faith. So when the hard time comes, always remember the hard time is to make you stronger. And that when you come out of it, it's double. Good example. Our good brother Job. Everything was double, the Bible says. Yeah, even his children. That's why Pastor has now mentioned that you're like, oh, the Bible say God give Job double the children. He has six, suddenly 12. Double, everything double. The cows he have, 1,000, 2,000. The house he have, two, suddenly become four. Can fit in all his children. And so this is God's way of telling you in the world, we all go through struggle. We try so hard to buy that one car. We have tried so hard to buy that one house. But God is saying, hey, when you serve me and believe in me, I will double it for you. Because his grace is sufficient for you. Oh, I'm spiritual. I don't need all that. Oh, wow. Praise God for you. But don't forget you are in this life. You get up. After brushing your teeth, combing your hair, washing your face, what's the next thing you'll do? Kopi, kopi. And along with the coffee comes what? Nasi lemak. Chapari. Roti chanai. Because that's natural. Unless you're fasting. Right now, fasting man cannot. You know? But... You are in this life. And Jesus knows. In fact, Jesus said, make them sit down. Let's feed them. You think Jesus don't know you're hungry? This morning, those of you who did take breakfast like pastor, my stomach is growling now. I'm not spiritual. I'm in my flesh. And I can't help it. Because in my system, there's all this juice. There's all this thing working in my stomach that no food is there. And I can feel it is growling. The gastric juice is running in and out, shooting up and down. Because there's no food. But once I put food inside, then it will be quiet. It's like a baby. When the baby is hungry, the baby will cry. And if you don't get it done fast, you're in big trouble. Because nobody wants a crying baby. And the baby will keep on crying until you give the baby the food, the milk. Same thing with you and I. But you see, our focus is always on ourselves. Our focus is always on what I need, what I want. Remember the Bible say, we are all selfish. And so God, don't blame you on that. God knows you're selfish. Yeah. That's why Adam go and hide himself. You know? He wants to save himself. So, when you start focusing on God, when you say, Jesus, I'm going to look to you. I'm not going to look. That's why Jesus said, if you believe on me, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You know what's living water? That means your life is going to be Alive, living, fresh, like a fountain. And so, you want a double portion? You need to start believing and focusing on Jesus. Why? When you start doing that, only God is righteous. Only God is good. You and I 
we need to rely on Him for all that. Can you say amen? And so, if you can take what is in your life, you will make it. What do you mean by that, preacher? What I mean is a lot of people, instead of serving God with gladness, which the word of God tells us, we serve God with grumpiness. We are not happy over this. We are not happy over that. And then we say, God, it is so hard to serve you. We have made it difficult for ourselves. Serving God is actually very simple. Believe. Jesus many times say, why you don't just believe? Just believe. The Bible says, Father Abraham, you just believe. And you know, when Father Abraham believed on God, it was imputed to him in the book of Hebrew, God's righteousness. And when God's righteousness is on Father Abraham's life, everything doubled. You need to understand, Abraham lived a nomadic life. Don't own anything. No house, no uh, sheep, no cows or whatever. No servants. But when Abraham started to believe God, suddenly God's righteousness is upon Abraham's life. Everything in Abraham's life double. You go read about it. Double. And what Abraham did, just believe, that's all. It's not hard to believe. The trouble is, many of us will believe based on our emotion. Yeah? We believe based on our mindset. Because we don't want to be a fool. But you see, when you believe God, in the eyes of God, you are not a fool. You are wise. <coughs> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, suddenly his righteousness is in your life. You don't even have to pray about it. You don't even have to ask it. By your believing, you will be roped with his righteousness. And when you have God's righteousness, everything falls in place. Jesus said, what you eat, what you dress, what you put on, it will fall in place. But the trouble is a lot of us, we like to struggle in life. Because we don't have the belief, we don't have the faith. We are fearful. We are like Gideon. <laughs> I'm fearful, I need to hide. Whatever I do today, the enemy will come and destroy, I better hide it. But what did God say to Gideon? You know me. You are a man of might. Why are you hiding? And so today, I want to challenge every child of God here, including myself. Don't hide from God. Tell God, I believe and I will obey in my life. We all sing the song, my life is in you. And that is great. But how many of us really put our life in his hand? The just shall live by faith. So against all your emotion, your fear, all of you, you need to start learning. I must have the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God don't come to you because you pray a lot. Because you come to Sunday service. Because you read the Bible. Because you fast a lot. I will give you the answer in the Bible. The righteousness of God come upon you when you believe. That's the answer. That's why Abraham believed. He got the righteousness of God. All it takes is just believe. So when you believe, you have the righteousness of God. And when you have the righteousness of God, oh my goodness, it's like you are new already. You are, you are created new. You are like the first Adam. God look at you, he's looking at his own righteousness. <coughs> say, That's my righteousness. Double portion. And your life will be double. Double in hell. 
double in your finance. You won't struggle. You know why people, Christians should not struggle? You know why they struggle? Because you left God out of your life. By what? By your own unbelief. So you need to start believing. Believe that God is. Believe that God is yay and amen. Don't, through your action, unbelief. You know, through our action is where we show the sign whether we really believe. Like Jesus tell Peter, you believe? Walk, walk, walk on the water. Of course, Peter was not Malaysian huh? because I say walk. Lah. He was not Malaysian. He was a Jew. You know, Jesus said walk. Peter said, are you sure, Lord? You see? He asked back. Jesus asked him a question, and then he asked back Jesus a question. That's what trouble we go through. God asks you a question, you ask God back a question. That means you don't believe. When you ask God back a question, you are telling God, I need to check. Is it true? Folks, God is God. Unless you don't believe in God. But if you believe in God, let me tell you, God never changed. God is forever I am. I will be the I am of what you want me to be. Yeah? You want double portion? God, you are the I am. I believe. And that's why God, in the Old Testament, at hard time with all these people, and I give them the law, suddenly, they have to have the law, crutches. You know, I have broke right leg and left leg at different times. And they say, you need crutches. I was stubborn. Say, no need. And I would hop around and jump around, but in pain. I would do that. My bone was cracked, hairline. I was stubborn. Nobody likes to use crutches. One time we have a crutches, a pair of crutches there. Someone you see, I left it there. And I don't believe any of us say, oh, there's a crutches. Let me go and have it. And then we go in life with crutches. So Christian, when you believe on Jesus Christ, don't use crutches. Don't use crutches. You need to say, this is a good day. Jesus, I believe in you. Declare it. You need to declare it. The devil fear most is when you start declaring it early morning. When you tell the devil, I believe in Jesus, the devil cannot do anything already. The devil cannot steal your belief. He can only put fear into you. He can cause you to doubt God, to doubt his word, to doubt even the church. That's what the devil wants to keep you. But the moment you believe, the devil get panicked already. Because faith is very powerful. And we got to put the faith in the right place that is in God. Can you believe in the world? People put faith in so many different things and it will cause damages. It will cause uprising. It will cause chaos, destruction. So the faith that you have is very powerful. Put your faith in the right stuff. You want double portion in your life? Tell Jesus, I believe. Even I don't feel like it. Even I'm going through a lot of trials, heartache. But God, nevertheless, I believe. When you do that, the righteousness of God suddenly zoom into your life. And when you have the righteousness of God, you have double portion. I guarantee you that. God has never been unfaithful at any one moment. In fact, God said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. No matter what you are going through, God is there. You know, God is the creator. I don't care, you are not a Christian, you are just a living soul running around in other parts of the world, at home or whatever. But because God is a creator, he's the maker. 
whether you acknowledge him or not, God knows I created you. In fact, God told Jeremiah, when you have formed the conception in your mother's womb, I'm the one that gives that life. So whether you acknowledge him is irrelevant because God knows I'm the maker, I'm the creator. And one day you'll die. But before you die, why don't you enjoy your life? Every one of us wants to enjoy our life, right? Anyone here, you don't want to enjoy your life? You want to be miserable? You want to be heartbroken all the time? You want to be stressed out? Huh? You want your blood rice? The Filipinos say blood rice. Blood rice. You want that? You don't want. See? And so because we want to enjoy our life. And God is not against. Now, if someone like me, a preacher, preach, go and enjoy. That guy has got problems. Stone him. Because in the Bible, it does not say that. In the Bible, God wish you the best. Seriously. Sometimes we have all this wrong mindset. We think God is up there and say, I wish you the worst. No. When you are the maker and the creator, you want to enjoy what, as a maker or creator, you're created. I observed one day and God taught me a lesson. Here again, Cedric. The parent buy him Lego toy. And then I sit there, observing him, and he, see, this is a battleship. Wow, this kid know how to make and create. Through his imagination, he put the block together and created. And then the next thing, he take it all apart and then created an aeroplane. And then after they take it apart, he created a gun and shoot you. <laughs> How creative in his brain. Same thing. And he loved it. He loved his Lego toy. Because he can take it apart and then start setting it to his imagination. How much more today when God created each and every one of you? God is so excited and happy. I've created you in my own image. And when you acknowledge God, when you say, yes, my maker and my creator, I believe in you, he will give you double portion. Let's clap to the Lord. <clears throat> My son, Kenneth, is here, and I'm not bragging on him, just a witness, okay? In my family, only two guys run in Stadium Merdeka and get a trophy. We're the first, second, third, lah. Huh? So I told Kenneth when he said, You know, when I was in high school, Chonghua, I ran in the stadium and I received a bronze medal. I said, Wow. I said, do you know your uncle, that is my first brother who died, he also, same school, went to Stadium Merdeka back in 1967 and ran and got a trophy. Of course, he died at the age of 17 years old of liver cirrhosis. Lost his weight, turned yellow, within one year, died. And I said, Kenneth, you can identify your uncle. He's the other fellow that run. But then if you ask Kenneth today, of course, my brother did, you know, can I ask him? Kenneth is still around. Ask Kenneth. They will have to practice. The PE teacher or the, you know, one in charge of running and sport, he would choose 20 fuller. I remember I tried to make it, but never make it. 50, 30, after 20, I'm out already. They will choose right down to the top three that can run fastest. And we practice, you know, we, we try. We even try to don't drink water so we can be lighter. And it was difficult running. I'm not a runner. But somehow my son, he surprised me. He's a runner. Same thing in a game. 
before you can run in Stadium Merdeka, in the stadium, in the school field, they make you run. And so you will have to go through a lot of testing your skill. How to you know, make yourself... That's why you see the people in the running stadium, they wear very light shorts. They don't wear, you know, what you can say, pants or anything. They make themselves like singlet, everything, so that they can less weight, they can run faster. But when they do that, Paul said to receive a prize. They will run, you know, in the race. And the coach will choose the best. The one they fail it, sorry. Better luck next time. It is easy to look good when things are going good. And then when you go through where they start choosing the best out, then you know why you have to do a lot of trading. You know, a lot of increasing the speed, building up your muscle, your leg muscle, because you need, you need to be a good runner, you got to have good muscle. Okay? Same thing as a Christian. We go through. We go through the tough strainers training. You know? Sister Hava, I cannot get up 6 o'clock. That's too early for me. Well, good for you. But that's the training. Only the best will make it. Hello? Am I speaking some sense here? Christians are not exempted. Oh, I believe. How about getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning? That one, uh, I think I got trouble. Uh. So your belief I got trouble, is it? It's called discipline. Discipline. Paul say, we have to discipline this fellow here. Either you allow the Holy Ghost to help this fellow here, train this fellow, this body, and bring it under subjection, or the body will try to be your master. They say, successful people are people that have discipline. I tell you, because I pastor went through that. I discipline myself. It's, it's, it's great to say, Wow, look, I'm so successful, the fella. Oh. But if you ask the fella, anyone who achieve, even in the race, they have discipline. Belief is good. But your belief need discipline. Yeah, the discipline is what? I believe enough. God said I'll do it. Yeah. God said, do you believe enough? Walk on the water. Uh, not yet, yet, not yet. <laughs> exercise your faith. We need to exercise our faith. Faith is great, but we need to exercise it. The Bible says, faith is a substance of being hoped for. You got to, hoping for it. I believe God, whatever you tell me. When Jesus wanted to turn the water into wine, he said to those people, you've got to bring me water pot. If you don't make me water pot filled with water, how am I going to turn the water into wine? You bring me one water pot, that's all I can do, one water pot for you. You bring me two, is two. You bring me 100, you are going to be blessed with 100 water pots of water turning into wine, which is way greater than one water pot. How much you want the double portion into your life? You got to bring it to Jesus. And when you bring it to him, he's going to do the miraculous for you. Faith without works is dead. A woman who feels hopeless after her husband has had a major heart attack, may not immediately understand how suffering will lead to hope. And I have seen 
in my ministry where a man got a heart attack, the woman feels so hopeless back in Santo Pasa. The daughter ran to the church, pastor, pastor, my father just had a heart attack. He's in the ambulance, heading to the hospital. My mother is crying like crazy. So I've seen that. It is an episode that happened back in 1980 when I was a young minister. And then Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. You see, the ways of God are different from us. What? My husband just got a heart attack. You asked me to rejoice. It's difficult. It doesn't make sense. But Paul is saying, not only that. That means we enjoy all the good things. We want good things to happen to us. All, but this is what Paul said. Okay? As I continue, he said, we know that suffering produce endurance. And endurance produces character. Character produces hope. So what Paul was really saying, suffering eventually results in the actual hope for the believer. That lady lost her husband. Very tragic, very sad. You ask me the will of God, I won't answer you. Only God knows. But I will tell you, that episode or that event turned that woman strong believer. It produced endurance because of the suffering. It produced where she hopes so strong. So sometimes I don't know why to some people it has to happen this type of thing. But I see it makes them strong. It produce, you can teach, teach, teach. I mean, I've been teaching 40 years now. Cannot get into the head. So only God knows what, what it takes to make them, that they come out stronger. And so, psychologists have discovered that facing adversity and setback often results in personal development. Do you know that? Yeah, psychologists will tell you. You know, a fellow have it too good, you're in danger. Because then you take things for granted. Then you don't feel the need of development. But when something tragic happened to you, when something, I know I remember when I was in Germany, I mean, I was illegal. I don't have a visa. I was legal actually. I got tourist visa. But I cannot work. I remember... When winter come, I have very little clothing. I don't even have a thick kind of clothing. I wear Levi's jacket during winter time, where the temperature was minus 20, snowing. It was so cold. I saw this African brother. He took the heater, you know the heater? He put it inside his T-shirt. Yeah, he was wearing a, a pullover. He put it inside. I said, brother, burn, la, burn. He said, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. I'm back in Africa. It's so hot now. Ooh. Crazy thing they will do. And I'm sharing with you so you believe. I said, crazy guy. And so because I was in adversity, I was in a foreign country. I don't have money. And when I went to every restaurant, bars, you got job. Ah. I want to work. After some six, seven restaurants that I went, finally, I went to this one called the Hong Kong restaurant. And then that Mr. Han, the Shanghainese, you are from Malaysia. You want a job? Ah? I got, I need a dishwasher. So I was a Malaysian made dishwasher. They hire washing dishes. They gave me a lodging. They give me food. 
give me everything, salary. And so suddenly I can buy nice overcoat. I can buy warm clothing because I got money now every month and I can eat Chinese food, you know? So go through all that. So what I'm saying is suffering, suddenly it become a blessing. Sometimes we think suffering is not good. Actually suffering will bring the best out of you. And that's how suddenly I become a survivalist. I know how to survive. I did not sit back because it cost me to do something about being cold, hungry. No food. I got to survive. Suddenly, you start to have that. Same thing in your belief. Sometimes God will cause you to go through. So then he will get your attention. He will get what he wants to reward you. Christian suffering is even greater than personal development. Because suffering grows in us a deeper hope. A hope for the unseen. A hope for the things that will last forever. So never question God. God, he's the maker. So when you are going through suffering, always say, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. Yeah. Just say, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. Cedric had learned that. Yeah. You say, G uh, Cedric, say what you believe in. He said, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you. He'll tell you. That's what he tell me. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. We need to train the child. Rather than believe in men, rather than believe in the world, teach them to believe in Jesus. Because that's the right way. God has resources no man has. God can open doors no man can. God can do all things. I will tell you that. Not just something, not just certain things. God can do all things. <coughs> In my experience, <coughs> God taught me about open doors, about things He wants me not to be uh, afraid to just walk right through. And I have to learn step by step to believe Him. And it's so important. And then also, we need to learn. You know, I have trained people. I'm a discipler. I'm a mentor. So there was this man that I know. He had no transportation. Back in the 80s, to have a car, well, you are very, very, you, you have, you made it. And the car those days was, Dustin Sunny 120Y. You never heard of. Mazda Capella. Nissan Bluebird. This type of car you never heard of. Toyota KE30. Of course, now you have Proton Arrow Bag. Back then, you have, they don't even know Proton Arrow. It's still a very advanced car already. But today, nobody wants a Proton Arrow Bag. They want my V. Asia. With all that push button technology. So back then, this guy wanted to buy a Toyota KE20. Very simple car. Open the hood, just one engine. That's it. No aircon one. Everything like that. No aircon. The gear is not automatic. The gear is one, two, three, four, five, reverse. It's like one stick, you know. It's like a broomstick. Very simple car, very simple engine. But it costs 7,000 ringgit. So this guy that I know, he wanted to, to I don't know whether he want to show up or he want to come to church. He, he want a car. He don't want to take the 
taxi or the bus, Selangor bus. You heard of Selangor bus? Do they still have that? And then in the place that I say in Sandor, Siri Jaya, the blue color Siri Jaya. I have taken many times Siri Jaya bus, go to Central Market. And so what happened? He was prayerful to God in blessing him with a car. However, here is the problem here. However, listen. He lacked funds for the car upkeep. Like insurance, put the gasoline in the car regularly. Not one time thing, huh? regularly. Huh? This fella, he could not use the car because he couldn't pay for the insurance every year. And he had trouble putting, putting gasoline in the car. One time I was in his car and I saw the red light showing anytime the car is going to stop because the tank is saying empty, 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 empty. And I said, brother, red color, your fuel tank. He said, don't worry, I got fit. We will keep going. I say, brother, you don't want to stop at the traffic light and then your car, no gas, cannot go. I won't, I won't push. Huh? Don't worry. Have faith. It will go. Sure enough, we came to the traffic junction. The car stopped finally. So such a guy, you know. And I say, oh, Jesus, help us. Why, why, why I have a fellow like that? I want to punch him. I want to kill him. I want to kick him. I say, I'm not going to push It was bad in a traffic light on a noon day. And then, and always I found out this guy go to the petrol station, put one ringgit petrol. Hey, don't laugh. One ringgit bad day is like 10 ringgit. Huh? So he put, shh, you know, satu ringgit saja. Today, our motorbike don't even put one ringgit. Huh? Motorbike, they put more. So you laugh because I experienced that. I went through the suffering. Okay, so why would God want to give this fellow a car? Give him a car also no use. He can't even every year renew the insurance. Petrol, so he put one ring gate. Same thing. We want God bless us. But we don't want to have the resources. We lack the resources. So what is the use give you? The car better give you a kereta lembu. Uh, lembu, cow's power. In my time, I always saw, I always see this, this cow, buffalo cow with the wheel, and then this guy with the shade. And I don't know why they are always Punjabi. You'll see that. And then the cow, and sometimes I'll jump behind and sit and, and just go along. No need to put gas. No need insurance. <laughs> you just feed the cow only. And the cow, you can find grass everywhere. You just jump out. I've done that. Back in the 70s. See, today you people are out of touch of what was there back then. That was the fun I enjoy. But today is different. I have to pray and have to ask God. In the Philippines, I think they still have that. The bullock cut. It was wonderful. And the car would just keep walking, you know? And you just keep tackling along. That's just wood. And then with two wheels. And the guy in front, he don't care. You jump up, jump off. He don't care. He won't, he won't give you bullock car ticket or bus ticket. No such thing. He welcome you. You can go off anytime you want. And that's how the life back then was. The True building of your faith comes from the process, not the long suffering in the process where your grower takes place. The finish line is the reward. Jesus said, it is finished. Do you know how powerful the statement is? It is finished. That means everything that you lack, everything the devil took from you, everything, on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. But you have to go and take it. 
you, your belief must cause you to say, I, I will. Jesus, I believe enough. I will take it. Why are you not taking it? I'm shy. La. I don't want to put the money to put the gas inside. One ringgit I can put. Ten ringgit or even hundred ringgit. Forget it. One ringgit. So your faith is always very risky. And that's why you find yourself in the traffic light stuck. Because no more gas. Every morning, young people, listen to me, all the young people, okay? You rely too much on your strength. You think you are young now. 50, 50 years from now, you are going to get up. What happened? Uh? Why back pain? Uh? Brother, sister, can you massage me? Uh? Pain. <laughs> Why like that? Uh? Ah, there you are. The time has caught up with you. You think I've never gone through that? You think pastor is like, oh, look at pastor. Every day I will say, Jesus, I believe in you. Double portion. You are my help. You are my wealth. You are my king. You are my God. And that's why he maintained this body. God created it. And God wants to take care. Don't trust your strength and you're going to take Panadol. Yeah, I don't take Panadol. One time, of course, I was in the hospital. The doctor made me take Victor and Panadol and all that painkiller and all the steroid. But out today in my house, I don't accept the doctor prescribed your blood pressure borderline. Take this one, 5 mg. Take, take, take. I don't take my wife also make sure I take. That's why you need a wife. She'll remind you, take the 5 mg. I don't want a husband get heart attack just like the woman and then she will be in her suffering and then she will have greater hope. It's not going to happen. So, but if you ask me, go and take, the, I, I will not do it. Because every day I will tell Jesus, my hope is in you. I believe in you. And so I, I'm happy. God bless me. Yeah. And God bless us all. Why the government give you money? To renovate this? You think the government miss you so much? They think of you? No. It is because you serve a God that when we believe in Him, that God moved these people to contact us and say, what can we do for you? The kings is His hand. The nation is in His hand. So why fret yourself? Just believe. Serve him faithfully. He will cause your enemy to give you double. God will cause your enemy to give you double. Yeah. And that's why we must always remember Jesus is not only our redeemer. He's our vindicator. He will fight for you. He will cause it to your enemy to give it to you. Elijah we all know the story, the man of God. He came to the widow's house. And this is in 1 Kings chapter 19. And he brought restoration and recovery to this widow woman and her son. Because they have faith. And because they have faith, Elijah said, the God that I serve is a restorer. What do you need? Food, restore. My son died, restore. So Elijah came into this widow lady's home, became a restoration, a blessing. And the widow lady, all she need to do is, I believe. Tell me what I need to do. Give me your food. Okay, give, take. Anything else? Bring me some water. Okay, take. Obedience is better than sacrifice. This widow lady, she just obeyed. She believed by her action. Okay, prophet, anything else? Don't disturb me. I want to sleep in your room. Don't catch on me. This widow lady, while the famine was killing and destroying the land, this widow lady and her son survived through it all. Think about it. 
Just believe. Just tell God. The prophet come our way. I'll believe it. That's it. And then after that happened already, the Bible say in Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 17, it talks about because we are his son, we are the firstborn. The church is the firstborn. On the day of Pentecost, you and I, we are firstborn. When God fills us with his Holy Spirit. And so, because you are the firstborn, Deuteronomy 21 verse 17 say you will get a double portion. And Elisha, in 1 Kings chapter 19, he was to be the successor of Elijah. The firstborn son in his ministry. As we know, Elisha is going to succeed Elijah. He knows it. But because Elijah said, you are my first son in the ministry. Ask what you want. Elijah said, double portion. It's not greedy. Now you need to understand, Elisha didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for fame. All he asked from Elijah is double portion. The ministry. I've been following you. I want double portion. Listen to me, precious people of God and those online. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus say, what do you want? You need to tell Jesus, I want double portion. Double portion in my spiritual, in my physical life. God, I want double portion. And Elijah say, okay, it's going to be done, but you got to focus. Don't take your eyes off me. When the chariot come, you better make sure you are still looking at me. When I'm taking it away, then the double portion will come to you. And so day and night, Elijah follow Elijah. Never take his eye off. Always check. Elijah, are you in the toilet? Yes, I'm inside the toilet. Okay, good. Elijah, are you taking the bath? Yes, I'm inside the bath. Don't come inside. Okay, okay, good. So Elisha was making sure that Elijah is there. So the day come when the chariot of God came and took Elijah off and Elijah said, here is my mantle. Now you can do the ministry. Elisha took the mantle of Elijah and you know what he did? He smoked the water. The God of Elijah that I've been following. I have my faith in the God of Elijah. And the river starts opening. And the Bible say the powerful ministry of Elijah was double of Elijah. Jesus say, the works that I do, you are going to do greater. You are going to do double of what I'm doing. So folks, this morning, I want you to know, Jesus is saying, get your double portion. The works I'm doing, you are going to do it double. Get it. Fix your eye on Jesus. Tell the Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. And it's going to happen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. What would you ask God if he offer you anything? Asking God for all your needs to fulfill your highest purpose for your life is a great thing to ask. Get a double portion. What Jesus say, the works that I do, you are going to do greater. You are going to do it double. So it is the will of God for each and every one of you to do greater than what Jesus Christ has done. To live double greater. To rise higher because God created you 
to be winners and achievers. Let's reach out to him. Let's reach out to God and allow the presence of God. I have already shared the word of God and I have shown you what his will is. Now it is you. It is you to say, I believe. I believe God. I believe Jesus. I believe I will do that way. I believe my life will excel. Because you say, the things that I do, greater things you are going to do more than me. Mm -hmm.